This is a space that looks very simple, but it has some extremely powerful properties. The first one will be expressed through the following illustration. Imagine you are an ant, walking around a giant, weirdly shaped object. Say the surface of a donut, or a globe, or something funkier. Even if the shape is complex and curvy, up close, it always feels like you are walking on a flat, ordinary two-dimensional space. A manifold is just like that, where every small patch looks like flat space if you zoom in enough. If you want to know more about manifolds, check out this video in our channel. Now, C infinity means it is smooth. You can do calculus on it. You can take derivatives as many times as you like and everything behaves nicely. No sharp corners, no jumps. Think of this saying that you can draw curves and do math on them without any weird breaks. Another important property is that the space is Hausdorff. This just means you can separate any two different points with their own bubble. So, open sets that don't overlap. In a regular space, like the room you're probably in, if you pick two points, you can create a little ball around each such that they don't touch. That's Hausdorff. So it avoids weird spaces where points cling together in strange ways. In order to appreciate this property, which we very often take for granted, let's see a counterexample of such a weird space, so a non-Hausdorff space. This example is called the two touching planes. Imagine two copies of the plane R2, say P1 and P2. Now glue them together along everything except the origin. That means all points X and Y different from the origin in P1 and P2 are identified. They are the same. But the origin in each plane, so 001 and 002, are kept as separate points. Now you have two origins but everything else is merged into a single copy. Let's try to create two open disks, or neighborhoods, around 001 and another around 002. The problem is, no matter how small the disks are, they will always share all the same points except the origin, so the disks always overlap. This makes it impossible to separate the origins of the first plane from the origin of the second plane with non-overlapping open sets. In other words, the space is not Hausdorff. Every Riemannian manifold must be Hausdorff, so you have to be able to separate distinct points using open neighborhoods. Another property that gets many people confused, but is super important, is the following. Think of a space, like the real plane, as a huge LEGO world. The open sets are the Lego bricks that you use to build any shape or structure, so any neighborhood. But just like in Lego, you don't need every possible shape. You just need a collection of small pieces that you can combine. That collection is the intuition behind a basis in a topological space. A basis is a special collection of open sets that acts like the building blocks of spaces. Now, we want the set of basic building blocks, so open sets, to be countable. That means you can make a list of them. Even if it's infinite, the list behaves like counting. One, two, three, four, and so on. If you want to delve deeper into exactly what countable means, both from the intuitive and rigorous point of view, check out this video. Link in the description. Anyway, this property is better expressed by saying that the space is second countable. In other words, there exists a countable list of open sets, such that any open set in the space can be made by gluing some of them together. Why does it matter? Being second countable ensures that the space is not too big, in a topological sense. Also, it guarantees that you can use sequences, instead of more complicated tools. The classic example of a second countable space is Rn, the real space in n dimensions even though the set of real numbers itself is uncountable. You can make a countable collection, so a list, of all open balls with rational center coordinates and rational radius. 
This is possible because, despite the fact that the set rational numbers is dense, it is countable. Of course, this depends not only on the space itself, but mainly on the kind of topology that we chose. So, the definition of open sets that we're using. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like it and to subscribe to the channel. A counterexample would be the set of real numbers with a discrete topology, tau. This topology defines open sets as subsets of the real numbers, with only one element, called singletons. This is certainly not countable. Because if it were, then the real numbers themselves would be countable as well. And we know that the set of real numbers is uncountable. So these are the properties we've seen so far. The space is locally Euclidean, so a manifold. Smooth, you can do calculus in it, so it's C-infinity. Well-behaved, in the sense that no points stuck together in weird ways, so it is Hausdorff. And the space is not too big or too messy. In other words, it is second countable. So far, this is the precise definition of a smooth manifold. Remark, in differential geometry, the definition of a manifold assumes the space to be Hausdorff and second countable. However, in order to build a Riemannian manifold, we need one more thing, a Euclidean inner product on each tangent space of the manifold. But first of all, what is an inner product? It's a mathematical tool that allows you to measure lengths of vectors, angles between them, and say how much one vector points in the direction of another. It's like giving your space a way to talk about geometry, even if it's curved or abstract. You should think of the inner product as a directional ruler. It doesn't just tell you how long something is. It also tells you how aligned two things are. Imagine two vectors in space. If they point in the same direction, it produces a large positive inner product. If they are at 90 degree angle, the inner product is zero. If they point in opposite directions, the inner product is very negative. Let's introduce a little bit more rigor to it, and we're going to do it through a specific example. The two vectors are v with coordinates x1, y1, and w with coordinates x2, y2. Then the standard inner product, which in this particular case is also called dot product, is x1 times x2 plus y1 times y2, which implies that the length of the vector v can be calculated this way. So the square root of x squared plus y squared, it's just the Pythagorean theorem. And the angle formed between these two vectors is calculated using the cosine formula. So the dot product divided by the multiplication of the lengths of each vector. But in a Riemann manifold, we also require the inner product to be Euclidean. So three conditions must be satisfied. First is that it is symmetric. This means that projecting the first vector's length onto the second or vice versa produces the same result. Second, it is bilinear. In words, if you scale one vector by a and another by b, then add them and project the result onto a third vector z, you get the same outcome as projecting each vector onto z first, scaling those projections, and then adding them together. And three, it is positive definite. Think of Euclidean inner product as a normal ruler. It works just like measuring things on flat paper or in the real world 3D space. Non-Euclidean inner products are those that fill at least one of these three conditions, like in pseudo-geometries, as in general relativity. Since the Euclidean inner product only works naturally in flat spaces, differential geometry extends it to curved spaces by defining it locally, specifically on the tangent space at each point. This is possible because manifolds are locally Euclidean and can be made smooth, which ensures that a well-defined, unique tangent space exists at every point. So no sharp corners or discontinuities here.
This way, we can still enjoy the benefits of Euclidean inner product, like measuring lengths, angles, and curvature, while applying it to more general curved spaces. So there you go, the complete definition of a Riemannian manifold. A space M, which is a C-infinity manifold, in other words, it is Hausdorff and second countable, equipped with a Euclidean inner product GP on each tangent space TPM of the manifold M for all points P in the manifold. In addition, the metric has the nice property of varying smoothly from point to point. These are some quick concrete examples of Riemannian manifolds. Let us know in the comments if you guys would like a video only discussing in detail each of these examples, or maybe just one of them in particular. The simplest and most fundamental Riemannian manifold is the Euclidean space, where the metric is defined to this way, so just the dot product. Second, any finite dimensional vector V with a metric G as its inner product. Third, the Euclidean sphere of radius R. The inner product is the one induced from the embedding of the sphere in the space Rn plus 1 and it is called the canonical inner product of the sphere. Fourth, the hyperboloid model of hyperbolic space. First, we define the ambient space Rn plus 1 with the appropriate inner product, where the hyperboloid is embedded. Points in Rn plus 1 are like this, and they're equipped with this inner product. This specific inner product is called a Minkowski metric. And it's not positive definite, because it allows for negative square lengths. In other words, the inner product of two vectors might be negative. We say that this inner product is indefinite. And thus, this space is not a Riemannian manifold. But instead, it is a pseudo-Riemannian manifold, or Lorentzian manifold. In special relativity, for example, if the inner product of a vector with itself is negative in the space-time diagram, then this is a space-like vector, which corresponds to a path that would require faster-than-light travel. If you guys want to know more details about this fascinating hyperbolic space, as well as an example of defining a torus as a Riemannian manifold, check out the PDF link in the description. Don't forget to check out our website where you can submit your own research. More details in the description. If you like this video, I'm sure you're going to love this one. See you guys there.